Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about collective intelligence. Collective intelligence refers to a type of intelligent system which is produced by combining a number of less intelligent ones. So, for example, an ant colony is much smarter than the individual ants that compose it. Similarly, multicellular organisms are smarter than the individual cells that make up their bodies. A specific example of that would be a brain. In a brain, lots of neurons, which are themselves not very intelligent, are all linked together into a whole system which is much more intelligent than an individual neuron. And human society forms an important example of collective intelligence. There, groups of individuals club together to form companies and governments, which are organisations that are much smarter than the individual humans that compose them in many ways. Next, cooperation. And collective intelligence is helped by cooperation. Um, it's not absolutely necessary to have a whole bunch of agents cooperating with each other in order for them to produce collective intelligence. However, it does often help. And um, if you look at the ways in which cooperation is produced in biological systems, you'll see that probably the main one is relatedness. If organisms are clones of each other, then they help each other through kin selection. And then next most important mechanism is reciprocal altruism, um, where organisms um, help each other in the hope of being helped in the future. And um, one important tool that facilitates the um, development of reciprocal altruism in systems is reputations. Um, you want to be able to trust other agents, and it helps to know what their reputation is in order to know whether or not they're trustworthy or not. So um, reputation systems are designed to let people's history be carried around with them in a public fashion that's visible to other agents that they might interact with. So those other agents have an idea of whether or not the um, people are trustworthy or not. And um, there's a number of mechanisms in society that are designed to help facilitate the emergence of collective intelligence. And um, we need more of them, basically, because the existing mechanisms um, are imperfect in various ways. Um, one example is a management hierarchy. So if you have a whole bunch of individual agents acting together as a group, often they pull in different directions and don't cooperate with each other properly. Um, and one solution to that is to have one agent um, that you nominate as a manager um, that then coordinates the activity of the other individual agents. Um, however, um, that then produces a bottleneck. There's um, a kind of the manager is only one individual, and so um, there's communication problems between him and the other members of the organization if the organization becomes large. And so what happens is that a management hierarchy is developed where there's a manager and then um, there's various other people who are lower down in the management hierarchy that um, he can delegate things to, and then there's the workers at the end of the, um, of the chain. So um, that's one mechanism that's um, been developed to help um, with the emergence of collective intelligence. Um, another idea is voting or democracy. Um, that can um, provide a basic level of um, intelligence that's greater than any of the individuals that um, compose the, um, the society that's doing the voting. Um, another idea is marketplaces, where um, you have a currency, and it's used to um, purchase um, goods and services. And then the prices of individual things um, come to represent their worth in a manner that's um, more accurate than people can place on it if there wasn't a marketplace in, in, in existence. Um, another idea is straightforward parallelism. Um, there's a number of tasks that can be divided up into multiple um, sections, and if you've got multiple agents working on them at the same time, then that helps those tasks get completed more rapidly. And um, another important concept is the idea of a shared societal memory um, implemented via external artifacts, basically. Um, so when we were all hunter-gatherers, um, we carried our culture around um, with us in our brains, and that was only a certain amount of limited information that could be held in an individual human's brain. Um, and then once we developed um, writing and means of transmitting cult culture externally, then the cultural explosion that has resulted in modern society um, has been able to take off, um, whereas it couldn't have done that if all culture had to be carried around in human brains. Um, so um, next, fiction. Um, there's a reasonable example of an advanced society that illustrates, um, makes routine use of collective intelligence, and that's the Borg um, from Star Trek. Um, often the combination of human society and um, ant-like um, kind of collective superorganisms super um, brings to mind the Borg. Um, they're one of the main fictional examples that, um, that is common to many people.
Um, and then lastly, I'm um, going to talk about the relevance of collective intelligence to the development of machine intelligence. Um, the concepts associated with the idea of collective intelligence um, provide a methodology for making smarter things out of stupider ones, and that's just what's needed for machine intelligence projects. Um, so if you look at the technology that's needed, um, you basically need a communications network, um, language, and a shared external memory, and um, those are things that machines are pretty good at, basically. Um, humans may have been roughly the stupidest creatures that could possibly have undergone a technological and cultural explosion. However, it seems quite possible that even stupider machines could do much the same thing if they were given sufficiently advanced communication skills and a sufficiently good quality environmental memory. Their chances might be even better if they were allowed to piggyback on the existing human society, with humans compensating for their weaknesses, helping them to do the things that they cannot yet do alone, and teaching them how to perform their trades. This means that we might not have to wait until we get sophisticated machine intelligence before this process starts to take off. Indeed, it seems like this sort of process is already underway. Um, enjoy.